<clears throat> um, so, so you started, you started using hydromorph at work and this of course would turn into, maybe it started as a frequent uh, or a semi-frequent thing or infrequent and turned into, I imagine a daily situation where you're physically addicted to it. Is that correct? Well, you know, I, I only ever worked part-time, um, or at least within the last couple of years of, of, of being in the ER. Um, so, uh, I always had, you know, three or four days off and wasn't, wasn't bringing it home with me. Cause I could, I was only sort of able to get what I could get to take there, um, during those shifts. And so, you know, the, the question that I remember being asked by physicians about that, like about my experience with detox and I really think it came to be that particularly within the last couple of months that I would come home from my days off and <clears throat> was experiencing some level of detox without even noticing it. And, um, you know, and, and some of my sleep disturbance, some of my eating disturbances, my mood, um, I think those things were affected on my days off. Um, but during my two or three shifts on, and if I picked on up overtime, going back into that environment with those cues, and uh, despite my best efforts, and you know, I've described this to you before, Nathan, that you know, before my shifts, I would um, wake up in the morning, say, and be getting ready to go to work, and get dressed, and be looking at in the mirror and having a conversation with myself, saying, "That's not going to happen today. Today, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be nabbing any any hydromorphone. I'm not going to be using it. I'm going to get myself out of this." And within five minutes of going back into the, into the setting, walking through those doors, hearing the sounds, smelling the smells, that sort of mass stimulation, and, and that cue would be right back there. And, um, and I would inevitably, you know, there were, initially I think I was able to hold off for maybe a couple of hours or maybe an hour. But it came to be that it was minutes near the end there. Yeah, I, I I didn't realize that, and I I haven't heard of a lot of people um, in my experience who were able to to handle that drug that way. Um, so it's pretty remarkable. I mean, you might have a kind of a unique set of genetics that allows you to do that. I don't think there's too many people out there who could manage a, like a three day on and a three or four day off uh, injectable hydromorph situation. That's quite remarkable. Yeah, but, but, you know, again, in reflection, my consumption of alcohol was going up while I was at home, and my use of marijuana was going up while I was at home. Sure. Um, it also, I mean, when I hear that, and I think you're telling yourself you're going to go into work and not use, but you're basically probably, I mean, your skin is probably crawling by the time you're going back to your shift. I mean, you have no chance. Like you're... I, I think so, and, and I didn't recognize that at the time, but I think it must have been. Um, and, uh, again, the, the, that irritability that I was feeling and this sort of the emotional distress that I was in, uh, at times, I wouldn't have called it withdrawal. And I think my, my tools of denial were so well honed as well and, um, denial and just sort of ignoring it. Yeah. Okay. So probably then in your mind, you figured that it, uh, this wasn't a, a full-blown physical addiction. It was more of a psychological addiction and it would be something that would be easier for you to shake than, than maybe um, you thought if it was something that you were using all the time, is that? Yeah, that's right. And you know, the, um, I had really chalked it up in my mind at the time to setting and, and that, that once I eventually changed work settings, that that would be the ticket and I would get out of that stimulation and not have that urge or desire yeah that's fairly classic kicking the can down the road type uh <laughs> strategy well, <laughs> totally but you know the the other the, the piece that um for me that and i've described you know having balls all these balls in the air and that as long as you still feel like you're juggling uh you can keep going and uh for me the schedule worked with my, with my own personal life. I was a single dad. Um, I was, had a mortgage to pay. I, um, had, had these other commitments that I needed to, in my mind, 
felt like I needed to fill, fulfill or else. And so I had this awareness that I needed to get out of there, that I needed to change, change settings, but I wasn't getting caught. I was able to get through my shifts. I was for all intents and purposes, high functioning. And there was a reinforcement there, a, a reinforcement of, of it being something that, that worked. Sorry, I just had a little bit of an audio issue there. Got it fixed. Yep. Um, so that being said, uh, you're finding that it was a effective strategy and that it was one that you had proved was somewhat sustainable. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, like what kind of, besides the, you know, toning down of the stress, what kind of benefits were you getting from from using uh, Hydromorph at work? Because I think a lot of people would expect that if you're a healthcare professional and you're using uh, an opiate like that, it would be uh, something that would be deleterious to your, your professional conduct or, you know, maybe not something that would make you a better nurse, but something that would make you a worse nurse. Can you kind of speak to the advantages and disadvantages of that? Yeah. You know, I, I, this is something I've thought a lot about and, and, you know, I think at the time, given the stress and anxiety and, um, and depression that I was experiencing, I had this, um, sort of a perfectionist quality, the super nurse quality that, that self self-described, um, and also reinforced by, um, by the public, by the people I met and by my coworkers that Corey's coming on shift he'll handle it. There's some slack that needs to be picked up. Give it to Corey. We're short staffed. Uh, it's okay. Corey's working. He'll, he'll, he'll handle it. And so, um, simultaneously to that, I was feeling, you know, worse and worse about myself, struggling more and more with my mental health. And, and the, the opiate was, gave me the ability to kind of bring myself back up. Um, it had quite a stimulant effect on me. It had a euphoric effect on me. And so um, it was not the image of, I was not the image that I think stereotypes and, and the media portray, portrays of, of people out on the street, you know, hunched over. I was yeah. flying. I was flying and I could um, go a mile a minute and be nice to people and be patient and, and um, go really, really fast. 